Well, good evening, North Student Ministry. Welcome to The Shed Online. This is our sixth lesson in the series, When Life Gets Difficult. And tonight, what we're talking about is where does comfort come from? Does it come from the things of earth, the things that are around me, the things that I have in my home? Is it from my parents? Or does comfort come from God? And I think we all know the right answer is that comfort comes from God. But how? How does God bring comfort to me when I'm in a difficult situation, when I am suffering, when I'm experiencing pain. And tonight we're going to learn that true and lasting comfort comes when we turn to Jesus in the midst of our suffering. And even in the most difficult situations that we face, we can find comfort in God, in his plan for our life, in the future, and his present. The main point tonight is that as God comforts us, we are to comfort others. And we're going to get to that in a few minutes. But before we look into the Word of God to, to learn about how God comforts us, let's dig into this, this idea of comfort. What makes you comfortable? Are you sitting in your comfortable uh, spot in the living room right now? Do you have your comfortable clothes on? Do you have your comfortable blanket on you? Are you wearing a comfortable pair of shoes? All of these things we think about when it comes to comfort. We even think food is comfortable. We have comfort food. Uh, in fact, it's been a while since I've done a top 10 for you guys, and uh, tonight's top 10 I'm going to bring to you has to do with Minnesotans' favorite food. These are the top 10 uh, favorite foods of Minnesotans, and maybe some of them are comfort foods for you. Let's start off with number 10 on the list and work our way up to the highest one, the most popular one here in Minnesota. Number 10 on the list is Spam. Maybe you've never had it, maybe you have, but it's popular in Minnesota. That canned, covered in gel meat product, whatever it is, usually pork or something, uh, especially grilled over the fire is how Minnesotans like it because uh, we do a lot of camping and that's a great food to take along camping. Number nine on the list, top 10 foods uh, to eat in Minnesota is actually something you can hunt and kill, pheasant. Have you had pheasant? It's delicious, I love it. Minnesotans love to hunt and they, uh, eat it many different ways. Uh, number eight on the list is Hmong food. Did you know that Minnesota has one of the largest populations of Hmong people outside of Asia? Uh, and so because of that, we've got a great Hmong influence and a lot of good dishes. I've never had it. Maybe you have. If you've had it, shoot me a text right now and tell me if you like it or not. Number seven on the list is crumb cake. This is a hand-rolled Norwegian waffle cookie. It's kind of like a mini ice cream cone, and then it's got powdered sugar in it instead of ice cream. And instead of eating one, you can eat about 25 if you'd like. They're kind of small. Number six on the list uh, is bars. Bars as in the delicious brownie type cookie type thing that you get at every church social. Uh, and many places in the community have them as well. All sorts of different flavors. Number five on the list Tater tots, sometimes you call them tots here in Minnesota. Uh, it's a food group of their own, I think, and especially good with ketchup or maybe some hot sauce. Number four, lefse, or Norwegian tortilla is kind of what it is, if you're not familiar with it, but most of you are. It's best served cold uh, with a little uh, pat of butter on it. Third is very popular, and that's hot dish. Uh, take your leftovers, add some tater tots or some other things to it, Maybe a little cheese sauce, maybe a little tomato sauce, maybe a little sour cream and mushroom soup, whatever. Your mom probably has her favorite way of making it. I know my mom had. It's delicious. We love it here in Minnesota. That's comfort food for me right there. Number two on the list of top 10 Minnesota favorite foods is lutefisk, all right? Who doesn't like cod soaked in lye, right? Served at room temperature, wow. All right, never had it, not sure if I will, uh, but I hear it takes paint off of uh, items if you need to do that. And the number one on the list of top 10 Minnesota favorite foods is the Juicy Lucy. Now this is a burger that is filled with cheese. There's cheese on the inside of the burger and it was created here in Minnesota and man, enough said, that sounds like a fantastic food right there. Were any of those comfort foods for you? Does food bring you comfort? I, we live a fairly comfortable lives here in America for the most part, but when we're sick and when we're hurting and suffering, maybe if you've got a cold or something, 
that's when we tend to want to be comforted, either by food or by an item or sometimes by a person. I remember uh, I played basketball in high school. And I remember one time I was so sick. I had this nasty head cold, but my basketball coach had this rule. If you didn't practice, you didn't play on Friday night. And so I never missed a practice no matter how sick I got. And I remember this one pra practice, I was there after school, I had a headache, and one minute my nose was stuffed and I couldn't breathe at all, and the next minute it was running like crazy and I had to find a towel or something to wipe it off with. Uh, it was the worst practice ever, but I pushed through. And guess what was in my mind the whole time was I couldn't wait to get home to my mom. You see, my mom, when she finds out that I'm sick, she'll say, why don't you go take a hot shower? Uh, I'll prepare some dinner for you. You can eat it on the couch, curl up in a blanket, and maybe turn the TV on and fall asleep. And that hope of comfort is what propelled me and kept me going through that really difficult practice. It was the presence of my mom that made all the difference in me enduring suffering during that basketball practice. When we suffer, it's important also to know that God is present with us. And he lets us know that he is near through his word. The word of God tells us God is near to you, particularly those who are suffering. His, his spirit too, the Holy Spirit is also with us and joins us in our suffering. And as we look at 2 Corinthians tonight, we're going to see that God, uh, that, that we can be God's presence comfort to others. Not only does God comfort us, but then because he comforts us, we can offer comfort to others. Again, the main point reminds us of that, that as God comforts us, we are to comfort others. Let's start off in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Uh, I'm going to have uh, Lydia Zeeland read this for us. Uh, follow along in your own scripture if you have it. If you don't have your Bible with you, go run, grab it, or bring it up on your phone. You're going to want to follow along and read God's word along with her. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, A. O praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the source of every mercy and the God who comforts us. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. Thank you for reading that. We've learned a lot in our series on when life gets difficult. We've learned that uh, suffering is just part of living on sin-cursed, uh, a fallen planet Earth. We've learned that God calls us to stand up for those who are suffering, uh, particularly in justice. We've learned that suffering is not always a result of my sin. Sometimes it's just a part of living life on Earth. Uh, we've learned a lot of things about suffering. We have a lot of knowledge about suffering at this point in Lesson 6. But... When you are hurting in that moment, we tend to want more than just knowledge. What do we want? We want relief. We want the pain to stop. Now in 2 Corinthians here, Paul pointed us to the source of that relief and he said it is God. Look in the scripture, it says he, God, is the God of all comfort. Now how exactly does God comfort us? Well, Typically, we view comfort as relief from pain. Like, for example, if I've got a headache, uh, that's my pain, and I want relief from it, I'm going to go take some ibuprofen, and that'll take the pain away. And we assume we'll experience God's comfort only when he takes our pain away, similar to like when ibuprofen takes my headache away. That's when we think comfort happens. However, God's word, the Bible, speaks of comfort in a different way. To bring comfort, according to the, to, to the Bible, means to come alongside somebody. Not to take their pain away, but to come alongside them. We experience comfort not necessarily because our pain is gone. We experience comfort because God is with us through our suffering. He comes alongside of us. He is there to strengthen. He is there to encourage us when we face pain. And, and sure, we'd love for God to remove the pain. And don't get me wrong, God can and often does choose to take pain out of our life and take suffering out of our life. But if it's not his will, uh, if, if he doesn't choose to do that, we can still know comfort because he's walking alongside of us. 
At times when we suffer, <clears throat> excuse me, we feel as if nobody else in the world understands what we're going through. However, I want you to remember last week's lesson, particularly uh, when we talked about Jesus and his suffering. And there's nothing we can experience that Jesus has not already suffered and experienced. Remember, he experienced the pain of loneliness. Jesus was abandoned on the cross all alone. He suffered. He suffered physical pain. Jesus endured the torture of the cross with all of its cruelty and suffering and shame as well. And remember also, he suffered the pain of rejection. Unbelieving people, even his own brothers, turned their backs and rejected Jesus Christ. Now when Paul says he, God, comforts us in all our affliction, Paul knew this from experience, similarly to how Jesus did. And before writing this letter, Paul had endured very difficult times. It was prison, beatings, he was stoned, people took large stones and threw them at him. They chased him out of a town because they didn't like what he was saying about Jesus uh, being the only way to salvation. He was rejected by people. He experienced hunger. And Paul's experience of God's comforting him moved him to worship, actually. If we were to read, we won't take time tonight, but we could go to the book of Acts and see that as Paul spent a night in jail after being beaten, he so experienced the presence of God alongside him in, his com in, in comforting him during his suffering that he worshipped and sang to God. But By the way, that's one of the reasons we sing worship songs every Sunday and every Wednesday when we gather at student ministry because we want to give people who are hurting and suffering a time to experience God and lift their voices and worship to the one who is comforting them and is alongside of them in their suffering. So Paul has experienced this. He has been uh, worshiping God. He spent time doing that. Um, and even through the difficult times that Paul faced, he, he, he could exclaim, blessed, read that in the text here, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was worshiping God. Before Paul even unpacked all the ways that, that God had comforted him, he first praised God for the opportunity to experience grace, to experience peace through Jesus Christ. And we can express praise to God too when we suffer. That's one of the things that we can do because God's with us. We know that when we face trouble, the God of all comfort is with us. He's right where we are. And as God comforts us, we are to comfort others. Let's continue in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 verses 4 through 7 and uh, I'm going to have Christopher read this for us. 2 Corinthians 1 4 through 7 who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Thanks, Christopher. We should be genuinely thankful for the comfort God gives through Jesus Christ. However, we must know that the comfort he provides is not just for our benefit. He wants us to extend that same comfort to others through us. We're kind of like a vehicle. Uh, of course, it's, we're, not, we're not the source of comfort in the lives of others. But we are to be that, that vehicle through which God brings comfort to others. We're his representative to them. And what he does in our lives should overflow into the lives of the people around us. We're suffering. I'm suffering. God comes alongside me and comforts me. And because of that, I'm so full of, of blessings and peace and hope that that flows out into the lives of others this is what Paul is saying. And while this truth can certainly apply uh, to all forms of affliction and suffering, Paul specifically here in 2 Corinthians 1 is talking about suffering related to being a follower of Jesus Christ, to being a Christian who is persecuted for 
being a Christian. And we, when we align ourselves with Jesus, the world is going to treat us harshly. Jesus said this in John 15, verse 18. He said, if the world hates you, understand that it hated me first before it hated you. Many Christians in America today, uh, ourselves included, have never really experienced persecution. We don't know what it's like to be beaten like Paul or, or put in jail like Paul because we call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ. Few, if any of us, have ever suffered any kind of physical or financial or even emotional harm because we've committed our lives to Jesus Christ. However, when such persecution comes, and I believe there will come a day when it comes to America, we have a great promise, and that's what Paul is sharing with us. We have this great promise that when we suffer for our faith in Christ, we will also experience the comfort of Christ. When we suffer our faith, for our faith in Christ, we will also experience the comfort of Christ. Paul was able to offer God's comfort to others because he experienced it himself in his own suffering and tribulations. Paul had experienced the worst kinds of persecution firsthand, and he didn't shy away from these troubles. Instead, he endured the trials so he could share Christ with others. And because he endured, endured these, these sufferings and these tribulations and afflictions, Paul was able to share the gospel with the Corinthian church, like we're reading here in First Corinthians, or Second Corinthians chapter 1, and he was able to comfort them because he experienced that. Just the model we've been talking about. Paul suffered and God was with him, and that enabled him to encourage and comfort the Corinthians who were then suffering for their faith. When we are willing to follow where God's le God leads us, God will use us to comfort those who are being hurt uh, in ways that are so meaningful and helpful to them. In fact, we'll often find that we are used most effectively in areas where we ourselves have suffered. For example, if you've ever had a family member die and you've had to go to their funeral, uh, you know how to bring comfort to somebody else who experiences death in their family. Because you've walked down that road, you've, you've traveled that path of grief and sorrow. However, it's not merely your experience that helps you comfort others. Remember, it's, the, it, it's, the, it's not that you've experienced it alone. That's some of it. But it's more that Jesus and God have walked with you in that experience. And that allows you to pass on hope and comfort to somebody else in the same situation. You are a vehicle for God's grace and comfort to others. As God comforts us, we are to comfort others. Let's finish up in uh, verses uh, 8 through 11 here. I'm going to ask uh, Audrey to read this for us. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 11. We don't want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of our affliction that took place in Asia. We were completely overwhelmed beyond our strength so that we even despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a terrible death, and he will deliver us. We have put our hope in him that he will deliver us again. While you join in helping us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gift that came to us through the prayers of many. Thanks for reading that. Paul pointed out another way here God can use us to bring comfort to others. Catch this. He said, our hope and trust in God brings comfort to others. When I have hope and trust in God and show that to other people and they can see it in my life and hear it in the things that I say, that brings comfort to them in their suffering. In describing his own painful experience in Asia, Paul declared that they had been more, those difficulties and sufferings had been more than he could bear. In fact, he even came close to dying and losing his life. I love Paul's transparency here. He confessed to being completely overwhelmed. And you know what? It's okay to get to that point and say, my suffering is huge. I'm overwhelmed. Yet, Paul had come to understand that he couldn't rely on his own ability to overcome those hardships. He had to trust in God, God coming alongside him. 
Trust comes when we see God as Paul saw God. Paul remembered God's power, the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That same power was at work in Paul's suffering, in his circumstances, in his difficult situation. And as God had worked in the past, he would continue to work in Paul's present and Paul's future. And the natural byproduct of genuine faith is trust in God and hope for the future that God uh, will continue to care for him and for sure a hope in heaven in the future. Paul had an unshakable, sure confidence in the power of God that God would deliver him and that gave him hope and trust. That encourages others. There's another way. While Paul knew a level of comfort because of hope and trust in God during those trying times, his confidence was bolstered in another way because he was supported by a group of people that were committed to praying for him. Here's another way we can comfort others, by praying for them. Our prayers comfort others. Knowing others are pursuing God in prayer for me or for you, it's comforting, it's encouraging. Even in the most difficult times, knowing that somebody is praying for you brings comfort and hope. It helps you know that God is beside you, present, caring for you. Stepping into the lives of those who hurt and suffer is a gift to them and a reason to thank God. These are things that we can do. This is something that we can do when somebody is suffering. We can pray for them. That is a gift that God has given us to extend to people. And even when we pray for those, we don't personally know. It doesn't even matter if you know them well or they don't have to be your best friend. They don't have to be a family member. Praying for them makes all the difference in their lives. It brings comfort to them when they find out that you have been praying for them. As God comforts us, we are to comfort others. When we suffer, God has compassion on us. When we hurt, God truly desires that we would experience relief from that pain. In fact, God desires this so much, he went to great lengths, including sending his son, Jesus, to suffer on the cross in our place. Jesus, bearing the penalty, the weight of, of our sin, is the greatest comfort we could ever experience. Think about that. It truly is to know that we are free from the power and the penalty of sin forever. And furthermore, God's comfort is available in every pain we experience if we are only willing to look to him and entrust that he is there with us. And then as we experience God's comfort, we are to extend that out to others. We're to be his vehicle, uh, extending comfort to those who might be suffering and also in need of comfort. As God comforts us, we are to comfort others. Well, thanks for hanging in there with us tonight. Your small group leaders are ready uh, to have a Zoom meeting with you. Have a great time chatting with them, and we will see you back here next week.